I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. Would a space like this building solve your storage needs? Only if it's planned right. We'll show you how. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. The voice of home improvement with projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. Recently, this house was purchased by a family that had a big concern prior to buying the house. They loved the house, they loved the lot, they loved the neighborhood, but felt like it just didn't have enough storage until they realized how large this building was positioned on the back of the property. Now it's 24 by 14, and if it's laid out properly, will provide them all the storage space they would ever want and space for a couple hobbies they really enjoy. Our suggestion for the layout of this building is to use this side of the garage for storage of string trimmers, shovels, rakes, that kind of thing. Then, in the back, a perfect place to build a workbench all the way across the back. Maybe some storage underneath, shelves, pegboard, that'll take care of that hobby. Another hobby, planting plants and gardening. We're going to build on this side a little potting bench for potting plants and plenty of storage for things that go along with that hobby. Now we're going to do all of this without compromising the space in the middle of the garage so that they could park a car here if they wanted to. Now we're going to take care of all of this in this week's show and along the way share with you some tips that I know you can use around your home. Stay with us. Boy, I'm glad we're working inside on this rainy day. Me too. Well, we're ready to get started on our garage makeover, and we had our lumber delivered just a few days ago. We have just about everything we need. We've got long links that'll make it even easier to put all the shelving together, a little longer than we could really get on our pickup truck, so the delivery was perfect. Now, the first area we're going to attack is the back of the garage, where we're making a little workshop. We'll have the workbench, some shelves, and some pegboard. Greg, who helps us a lot on the show, is going to help me on this one. Now, if you have a situation where you have enough money, a little bit in the budget to insulate and put some kind of wall covering up in a garage storage area, it's always a good idea. Here, the homeowners decided to work with what we have as far as our walls. Actually, we're going to use it to our advantage to build a nice, sturdy workbench. With a workbench, you have a couple of choices, freestanding or built-in. Both work well, but we're going with a built-in unit to economize on space and materials. First, we mark our height all the way across the back wall and begin figuring out how many supports we'll need. These supports will be made up from short pieces of 2x4s and 3 quarter inch plywood cut into triangular gussets. With careful layouts, you can get a whole lot of these out of one sheet. The supports are assembled using wood glue and drywall screws before they go on the wall. On each end, we nail a 2x4 to the side wall. Then we begin attaching the gusseted supports to the studs along the back wall. This is where the open stud bays really work to our advantage. A 14-foot 2x4 is nailed across the front of the support, tying everything together and giving us a sturdy base for the 3 quarter inch plywood top that we nail on next. Okay, now we have a good sturdy workbench. Now you may have noticed we've only made this 24 inches wide so that it wouldn't be so wide that you couldn't reach any of the pegboard or shelves we're about to build. Another thing we did with the plywood is we allowed it to overhang two and a half inches. This will make it a lot easier to clamp anything that we may need to clamp out on the edge of the workbench itself. Now what Greg's doing now is bringing us in a one by four that we'll nail to the studs on the back and along on the sides, almost like a kind of a kitchen backsplash. But the reason we're doing it here is so that nothing rolls off behind the workbench itself. But once we complete this, then we can move along with our pegboard. With the right layout, we'll cover this whole back wall using only two 4x8 sheets of pegboard. We lay out the location of the outlets and make the cuts with the rotary speed saw. Installation is easy because you can see the studs right through the pegboard. This stuff is all about utility, but it's really cleaned up the look of this garage as we begin laying out some shelves using cleats ripped from 1x4 pine and 1x12 pine shelving. By mounting the cleat just below the top of the pegboard, we're above the window and we have a few inches of pegboard to serve as a backstop for the shelf. 
two by four braces on the top side of the shelf will provide support without interfering with the pegboard. We also use the one by 12 to create a small shelf unit for power tools. The last thing we did is to drill a couple holes in our new workbench, inch and a half holes, perfect size for this tubing that I bought at the home center. Now this tubing is commonly used for like a bilge pump or sump pump. What I'll be using it for is kind of a homemade dust collection system. Now a miter saw can be positioned here. This can hook to the dust port itself or basically any power tool that has a dust port. Then this will be hooked to a little shop vac that will be positioned here. And the power for the shop vac, since we don't have any outlets there, will come up through this hole and plug right in. Now this will help minimize the amount of dust that might collect or be created in this room because it will be used for storage. Another idea, this little shelf can be used anytime for um, anything that you want to set up here, but it's also perfect for this fan to be positioned here. You can open the window and exhaust more of the dust, plus if you're working with anything that has some really strong fumes like paint or stripper, this will help to provide the ventilation that you need in those situations. Also, during the summertime, with the window open, you can turn it around this way, get a little breeze blowing in your shop. Hey, we're in pretty good shape here as far as our workshop. Next, we're going to look at a number of ways to maximize the storage we have in this garage building. It's time for this week's Simple Solution from home repair expert Joe Truini. Brought to you by Krylon. Innovation inspired. One of the best things you can do to ensure a successful paint job is to make sure you mix the paint thoroughly. That's right, Danny, and it's particularly important when you're painting from several gallons of paint because there's actually a color variation between cans of paint, even from the same manufacturer and the same color. So the trick is to, the technique is called boxing paint, which basically just means you pour two or three gallons of paint into a larger bucket. Now in this case, you see I taped a fiberglass window screen to a five gallon bucket just to strain out any debris or chips. And you just give it a second to filter through. Now this would really be handy if you were using old paint, particularly maybe some that you used last year and you've had out right. in the workshop, because uh, you'll always get those little crusties in that paint. Yeah, and the skin forms on the top. Right. And this will just filter it right out so it doesn't end up on your wall. So then what you need to do is just untape and remove the window screen and the easiest thing is to paint directly from the five gallon bucket. What I recommend is buying a roller screen like this. You just drop in, it hooks right onto the side of the bucket, and then you can roll right from the five gallon bucket. You don't have to bother putting it back into the smaller cans. And I'll tell you, it's a lot neater and, as you said, faster to use a five gallon bucket. And, and also, once you get it all in there, it's a lot easier to stir everything up. Keep using it well mixed. Uh, paint stick. You'll find it a lot easier to move around the room, too, than the flat trays that you typically see. Hey, we made some great progress on our garage makeover yesterday and we were able to complete all of the workshop portion of the garage. Our workbench, our shelves, our pegboard, it's ready to go. We'll probably end up using this before the end of today. Now where we're going to concentrate now is trying to provide the homeowners some adequate storage. They have a lot of boxes they're planning on bringing out to the garage, but we also want to save the space in the middle of the garage for a vehicle to park if they decide to do so. Now what we'll be doing is constructing a wide shelf running all the way down this wall, all the way down the other wall, which will give us a total of 18 foot of shelving on each side of the garage. 36 foot of shelving, that should take care of a lot of storage. Now, of course, when you're choosing to build storage like this, there's several things to keep in mind. First of all, you want to get it high enough where you're not bumping your head on it. You want to get it low enough to accommodate whatever you're deciding to put on the shelf itself. And more than anything, it's got to be sturdy. You've got to figure if the plywood gussets work for our bench, they should also do the job here. We don't need the 2x4 horizontal pieces here because we aren't adding a front band like we did on the bench. Just level and attach the gussets to the studs. Then cut the shelf board to length and screw it in place. As a rule of thumb for this composite shelving, you don't want to span more than say three or four feet between supports, even less if the shelf will carry a heavy load. Now this shelving certainly should help the homeowners a lot in being able to get boxes up off the ground and be able to see everything. Now another area in many garages that's completely untapped is all the space you have above a garage door. Now this garage door is nine foot long, eight foot deep, so there's a lot of space up there. And let's see exactly what all we have to work with. From the bottom of the joist to here around 14 inches. So we'll build a few little brackets to kind of utilize this space. Perfect spot for the homeowner's ladders. 
The first concern here is to make sure that the garage door will clear whatever we build. In this case, it's really more of a rack than shelving. The vertical pieces will be our safe clearance height of 13 inches, plus the height of the joist, five and a half inches. We screw the verticals to the horizontal pieces first so that all we have to do is attach them to the joist once we lift them into place. Now what you want to store on the rack and the spacings of your joist will determine how far apart these brackets should hang. That should work great for storage of ladders up above the garage door, but also some of the other long things that the homeowners may have, like pieces of lumber, maybe skis, boat oars, anything like that can be tucked away and utilized in this space up above. Now one thing the previous homeowners did that's really helping us out is when they installed fluorescent lights overhead, they actually recessed them to where it's flush with the bottom of the ceiling joist. By doing this, which is a good idea in any situation like this, it'll reduce the possibility of damage to any of the bulbs. Okay, the next step is to take advantage of this wall for all the storage of the lawn and garden equipment. The trick to this kind of storage is to give yourself as much flexibility as possible. Mounting a board on the wall, in this case a 2x4, to hang the tools on is a great way to do that, even if you have drywall or paneling. Now if you locate the board at the right height, you can space items all across the wall any way you like on almost any kind of hanger. Use whatever works best for you. Coated screw-in hooks, nails, long drywall screws, there's just tons of options. Now some items may require multiple hangers to mount securely or you may even have to get creative like we did with this wheelbarrow to hang some of the larger items on the wall. Next, our best new products. Let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. Brought to you by the Home Depot. If you head down to the home center to pick up a circular saw, you might be surprised at the selection you have to choose from. Here's a few things to consider. Now think about the type of projects that you do on a routine basis and choose a saw that fits the size project. Here's a good example. Now this is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw which will handle just about any kind of job that you might undertake, but it may be a little heavy for you or it just may be too heavy duty. Well, here's a good option. Now this one from Ryobi is a five and a half inch saw. The blade's been taken off here uh, for safety purposes in the store and it is a cordless so it's powered by an 18 volt battery. But you'll also need a couple extra AA batteries to handle this which is really neat. It's the exact line laser alignment system. When you turn this on and you're trying to cut say a piece of plywood with a, a long line, this will line you up so that you're not having to look over the saw and which can cause you to cut crooked or possibly even a safety problem. Now this type of system is called the One Plus system from Ryobi and you're able to buy these components separately but the one thing that comes with the saw including the blade and um, this, this is a storage lanyard that clips right in to the battery compartment allows you to hang it on your garage wall or workshop wall to keep it good and organized. Now the whole thing with this, not counting the battery, will cost you around $60. We've already made a big change inside this garage. We have all the storage space we need for lawn and garden tools, perfect storage above the garage doors for ladders and other long things that may end up in this room, and even a special place for a wheelbarrow. Now this wheelbarrow is going to get a lot of use around here because one of the homeowners is really into gardening. Big part of gardening, potting plants. So perfect place for a little potting bench would be right here. But the potting bench we're about to build can also be used outside. To protect it from the elements, we're going to build the bench from treated lumber using all 1x4 stock and trying to avoid the knots as we make our cuts. We begin with the two long pieces and cut a handle into one end of each. Between them, we attach cross pieces to hold the frame together. We're pre-drilling for the coated screws we're using so that we don't split the wood, especially near the ends of the pieces. Opposite the handles will be a small tray for the garden tools and next to it we're mounting a five gallon bucket which will be our potting soil well. The top half of the bench will be the frame we add on to to form the rest of the bench. By angling these one and five eighths inch screws, we keep them from going all the way through the two three quarter inch thick boards as we build up the bottom corners. The two front legs are a bit shorter because that's where we'll mount the wheels on a half inch steel rod that will serve as our axle. We finish the two levels of the bench, much like a deck with the board spaced out across the frame except for a removable panel over the potting soil well and a lip around the bottom level. We sand off the rough spots and we're done. 
our portable potty bench should work very nicely, both inside and out. Now, it's just the right height to work on plants a little bit, and the little lift-out panel here where all the potting soil will be will make it real convenient. Now, some people may want to use this as a garbage can. That would work well, too, but we'll have room right beside it here for a garbage can. And we use some of our leftover treated material to create almost a little pallet. And this can be positioned right in the corner, perfect place for larger bags of mulch or fertilizer so that they're not touching directly on the concrete itself. Now, we're pretty much finished with this part of the garage, but just one more thing to make it a little more convenient, some additional shelving right along these lines. Now, we'll use the same material that we have here, 16-inch wide shelf board, but this time we'll be notching it into the stud so that it goes all the way in and backs up to the siding. First, we cut a piece of shelving to length, then mark it in place to notch out for all of the studs. The same plywood brackets we've used throughout the garage work here, too, for great support and easy installation. Boy, this should work out perfect for the gardener of the house. Now, here's a few other things that we've done over the last hour or so to utilize this space in the garage. You know, the coated hooks I used for the lawn and garden tools earlier. They work great for getting the extension cords up out of the way. Also, the space that you have in the wall, perfect place for storing brooms, but to keep that from falling out, you can create a little a little keeper here with a 1x4 and a pivot screw that'll tuck down and this is good for maybe any type of molding that you may want to store in here or maybe some pipe works perfect. Another way that you can utilize that space, 1x4 scrap and a little bit of lattice molding there makes a great little shelf section for all these miscellaneous cans that you may have around the shop. And even spaces like this, like I have the nails, you can put all the nails you want in there. Then for the larger nails, we've left off the lattice strip and you can put all the big boxes of nails in there and even quart cans of paint. So we're in pretty good shape here. All we need to do now is a little bit of cleanup and start bringing this stuff on in. But first, check out our Around the Yard. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with lawn and garden expert Tricia Craven Worley. Brought to you by Timber Tech Composite Decking. Tricia, looks like the azaleas and the camellia certainly are growing well here. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how they're coming along. Now, what is this? Are you taking this out or putting it into the soil? Well, actually, I took this out of my fireplace, and I'm going to put it into this soil. Now, how could that help at all with it just being just wood ash? How can that benefit any plant? Well, you know, the fact that you say wood ash is a really good point because we want to make sure that when we use this ash, when we're finished with the fireplace for the season, uh -huh. that you haven't burned any wood that has paint on it or uh, nails because or maybe that, even treated wood is probably not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, not a good idea at all. We don't want any of those extra chemicals. But wood ash has uh, potassium in it that helps build the stems and phosphorus which helps with the root growth. Now is that good for any plants or do some plants like the acidic nature of soil more so than others? Well, certainly azaleas, rhododendrons, camellias, blueberries, a lot of plants that you find all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. love acid soil, and this helps with it. But it's also good for compost piles. Okay, what about um, planting when you're actually planting a plant? Is it good to maybe use this in the course of, of the actual plant? Yes, that would be a great idea, and there are a lot of planter mixes that already have it in it. So it's a really fabulous way to use something that would otherwise be trash and enhance your garden all over the place. Our garage makeover is completely finished and we have some happy homeowners because they were able to store everything they wanted to store in this building and still have plenty of room for a car. Hey, look at the workshop. It's ready to go. Workbench is in good shape, plenty of storage, and everything's very visible and easy to get to. We have all of our power tools. The pegboard's perfect for displaying everything. And they even have their miter saw all hooked up and ready to go, including the dust collection system we mentioned earlier that has the hose that hooks to the vacuum down below. We also threw in a little something extra here with some scrap plywood we have making these little jigs that'll hook right into the front of the workbench which will help to support any trim or lumber that they're cutting on the miter saw. And if they get tired of the miter saw being up here they can disconnect it and store it down below. And we got plenty of storage here. All of the shelving and all of the little brackets that we've used along this wall to display all the lawn and garden tools that the homeowners have but this way it keeps them up out of the way instead of right on the floor. Also overhead, the little bracket that we built for the ladder storage and a little bit of lumber is working great to get that up and out of the way. Also, the gardener in the house is very happy with their part of the garage and everything there is ready to go. 
Now, well, you know, we've done a lot of little things in this garage, and hopefully we were able to do a few things that you'll be able to use around your house to maximize your storage space. Hey, I'm Danny Lifford. Hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.